In this video, you will learn about the definition of differentiability of a function at a point x0. It will be defined via a limit of difference quotients. This limit will then be called the derivative of f at x0, in short, f prime of x0. As the notion of derivative is fundamental in differential calculus, it is important to understand its definition properly. Don't be afraid of the abstract definition shown here. It will be discussed in great detail in this video. Imagine you want to determine the slope of a function at a point. What does this even mean? In this graph, you would probably say that the slope in this point is smaller than the slope in that point. But how can you actually compute it? So far, the slope is defined only for straight lines. On a straight line, the slope is the same at every point and you can calculate it with the slope triangle. To do this, choose two points on the line. For instance, P21 and Q52 and draw the slope triangle. Then you get the slope of the line as the quotient of the vertical change over the horizontal change. Here it is 1 over 3. Hence, the slope of this line is 1 third. But what if the function is not a straight line, but the graph looks something like this? How can you compute the slope at a given point, for example here at P21? You can try the same approach as for the straight line. Choose a second point, Q, on the graph, for instance 3.53, and draw a straight line through P and Q. Such a line crossing the graph of f in at least two points is called a secant line. The slope of this secant line is a first approximation of the slope of f at p. You can improve this approximation by choosing q closer to p. For this, let q approach p. This results in a line that will later be called tangent line and whose slope is the slope of the graph of f at the point p. This graphical consideration seems to be a good way to determine the slope at a point. But how can you actually compute it? Let's go back to square 1. Try to look at the calculation in a more general way. As coordinates of p, write x0 and f of x0. You had a second point, q. Now express the coordinates of q using the ones of p. The x-coordinate of q will be denoted by x0 plus h, and the y-coordinate by f of x0 plus h. x0 is the x-coordinate of the point p, and h is the distance from the x-coordinate of q to x0 on the x-axis. The slope of the secant line between p and q is still computed with the slope triangle. The slope m is the vertical change that is f of x0 plus h minus f of x0, divided by the horizontal change, h. The formula for the slope of the secant line remains the same even if you choose a point closer to p. For the calculation of the slope of the tangent line, that is if the point q reaches the point p, you need the limit of the slopes of the secant lines, and you write lim. That's an abbreviation of limis, the Latin word for limit, and it is used to indicate a limit process. Below it is written which value h tends to. Here h becomes smaller and smaller, so it tends to zero. The slope of the tangent line is also denoted by f prime of x0 and is called the derivative of f in x0. You have seen now the geometrical intuition that leads to the definition of the derivative. You can find these ideas in the definition. You have an open interval d and a function f defined on d. The function f is differentiable in a point x0 if the limit of this quotient exists as h tends to 0, that is, if the limit is a real number. In this quotient you can recognize the slope of the secant line. It is also called the difference quotient. Geometrically speaking, the limit process yields the slope of the tangent line and thus the slope of the function f at the point x0, which is the value of the derivative of f, f prime of x0. What does it mean to take the limit as h tends to 0? Take another look at the previous example. There you saw that you can calculate the slope via the slope triangle. Now choose a specific value for h, 
for example 0.3, and insert it into the quotient. In the next step, let h get smaller and smaller, and look what happens to the calculated slope. Did you notice that the value of the slope approaches 0.4 slower and slower? The smallest value for h that was used here was 0.001. You can let this value approach 0 more and more. But you cannot use 0 itself, because you cannot divide by 0. To get the slope of the tangent line, you need to take the limit. You approached x0 from the right hand side that is, with a positive h. But you don't find this restriction in the definition of the derivative. That is, because h tends to 0 means that you have to approach from the right-hand side and the left-hand side, and the results have to be the same. If you are approaching from the left-hand side, you have to take h smaller than 0, that is negative. Everything else remains the same. Again, you let h tend to 0 to approach the point p. You see that you end up with the same straight line. You might wonder if you can reach every x0 in the domain from both sides. As an example, look at this function with the open interval 1, 3 as its domain and mark the domain on the x-axis. 1 itself is not in the domain. Imagine you have an x0 close to 1. Here in the picture it looks like you cannot approach it from the left hand side. However, if you zoom into the x-axis, you can see that there are indeed points left of x0 that are still in the domain. That is exactly the reason why the definition of differentiability requires the domain of f to be an open interval. In an open interval you can always approach a point x0 from both sides. Why do you have to approach the point from both sides anyway? Wouldn't it be enough to take the limit from one side? To answer this question, consider the absolute value function at the point x0 equal to 0. If you approach 0 from the right hand side, you end up with this line with slope 1. The limit of the difference quotient as h tends to 0, h greater than 0 is 1. If on the other hand you approach 0 from the left hand side, the result is a line with slope minus 1. The limit of the difference quotient as h tends to 0 with h smaller than 0 is minus 1. As the limit from the left and the limit from the right don't coincide, the limit as h tends to 0 does not exist, which means that the absolute value function is not differentiable at the point x0 equal to 0. Another example where the limit does not exist is shown here. If you try to approach x0 from the right hand side, you see that the secant line approaches a parallel to the y axis, meaning the slope tends to infinity. But the definition of limit requires it to be a finite real number, which is not the case here, so the limit does not exist. As a consequence, this function is not differentiable at the point x0. There are other cases of non-differentiability, which you will see and formally prove with the definition in case you decide to study math. In this video you've learned about the definition of differentiability of a function at a point x0 and interpreted the limit of the difference quotient at the point x0 geometrically as the slope of the tangent line at x0. This limit is called the derivative of f at x0 and it is denoted by f prime of x naught.